All right. So our next talk is uh, before the for the break is Jim Laredo from IBM talking about uh, enabling GraphQL for mass consumption. He has warned me that he has uh, inclement weather uh, where he is. So apparently there's massive thunderstorms there. Hopefully he will be able to maintain a connection with us today. Um, if he loses power, maybe he'll get a tour of Graph CMS or something like that. But uh, we'll we'll see what we can accomplish. So Jim, if you are able to go ahead and join the call here, just uh, hit the uh, share video at the top top right corner, and we'll get this next talk kicked off. Ah, here I am. There's Jim. All right. So without further ado, we will fight the weather and let you get right at it. Take it away, Jim. All right. Sorry about that. I lost power for 10 milliseconds. Well enough to cause all this craziness. <laughs> I'm Jim Laredo. Uh, and I've been working at, at IBM Research. For the last three years, we've been working on GraphQL, doing all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and uh, we actually have a utility that transforms REST APIs into GraphQL. I really recommend it, but that's not the topic of this conversation. Um, so I'm gonna talk about what is it gonna to take to get GraphQL to the next level? So I, um, I always looked around and see how GraphQL is doing and we can truly say that GraphQL continues to, to rise. Um, I look at interest, I look at Google Trend, I look at uh, downloads and the NPM, and we've been doubling year over year on, on the total downloads on, on the base GraphQL libraries and education. This is a graph from the GraphQL Foundation where uh, we're members of and we basically monitor, we, 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 we offer a course that is free for anybody that wants to get trained on GraphQL or if you wanna pay a little more, you'll get a diploma too. I also go into the GraphQL Foundation and they, they basically, um, have this landscape view of all the uh, users and providers and enablers of, of GraphQL technology. Uh, if, if you use GraphQL, you wanna be here, is you're just a pull request away um, to, to get your logo up there. But I wanted to peel the onion a little bit and see what, what are these guys doing and are, are they really enabling GraphQL for everyone to use? And so I'm gonna take five use cases very quickly and, and see how they've been uh, working on that. Uh, the first one is GraphQL, I won't talk too much, but we know that they were driven by, about a client experience. They really wanted to improve the client experience of the mobile app, and basically that created all these uh, change and, and, and these uh, great contributions to the community. The next one I wanna talk uh, about is, is PayPal. Pay PayPal is, is a story of, of productivity. Um, they basically uh, realized that uh, uh, by, um, having this middle layer, they basically could uh, create a standard way to access data. And then they realized that they didn't have to spend so much time gathering data that they, that was what their UI developers were doing, that they, they cut down and they, they're basically um, the, the amount they needed to develop a UI by, by substantial amount. Next one is uh, Starbucks. Starbucks is, is a story of, of, of integration and culture. They, they realized they could continue to use all the investment they had in, in, in REST APIs, but create a, a, a way to streamline their business logic, organize the data, and basically provide consistency across their platforms. And also they realized once they saw the light in, in their first uh, application that this was a, a way to basically uh, build for the future and continue to use GraphQL in, in other applications. Artsy, Artsy is a marketplace for art providers and uh, of art can come in and, and, and sell their art and, and you can go in and, and participate buying, I think even auctions. Uh, for them, it, 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 was, it was one of, of also the client experience. They realized that you, know, you could coalesce requests and, 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 and get your data quicker. And the way they put it, happy, happy users. Uh, faster apps means happy users, happy users means Basically, everyone's happy. But they also talk about uh, one of, uh, you know, development experience with the documentation and having basically a, 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 a live playground available and, and the docs available. I mean, you're probably thinking GraphQL. 
and 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 you know that that's a big change for those that of us that have used rest uh, finding the right rest api that that is in sync with the service you're trying to access is not an easy task and finally i want to talk about shopify and uh, shopify an e-commerce provider um, they basically wanted to extend their experience and and the value they had obtained with graphql to their ecosystem they wanted others to build uh, applications uh, with uh, the higher quality, with less code, uh, take advantage, they find an easy way to uh, promote their documentation. And all those gains that they had uh, had internally, they wanted to promote them outside so their partners could build um, uh, applications just as fast. When, when we, we have this, this uh, kind of landscape for the API economy, one of many at IBM, uh, but in this one, you know, you can break down the API economy in many ways. There, there are, of course, monetization uh, and business models. There is a, a whole aspect of uh, promoting and, and advertising uh, to encourage adoption of your API. Uh, but I want to, and, and then the, 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 what is the true enablers and what drives this API economy? And I want to focus on this last third. I mean, GraphQL APIs are APIs, so business models and monetization may change a little, but they're still APIs, so I'm not going to touch in the middle one. I want to touch to see if, you know, does GraphQL continue to enable and drive uh, uh, the API economy? So if I look at this from, from a point of view of drivers, we have these three dimensions. Um, we can see that the Shopify story fit, uh, 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 suits at the top, right? Creating ecosystems, making it easier, uh, faster. Uh, Shopify, of course, and PayPal bring that notion of speed to market, uh, faster turnaround and faster delivery. And uh, uh, from both face Facebook and Artsy, we, we see that the aspect of thinking about the customer and their experience and making sure that they can, uh, that those APIs change the way they, 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 their applications get built. Artsy as well uh, talked to us about uh, ease of development and, 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 and the tools available. And from Starbucks, we heard about uh, uh, how they were able to bring all the data together and, uh, and, and basically create a larger amount of data available to, to other, all of their applications. And of course, the, we heard that once they built the first one, they were ready to build more with uh, uh, so, so we see that both we see drivers in these stories and we see that basically GraphQL is enabling uh, all, all those drivers. So if we go back to this landscape, <clears throat> you would think that, hey, everybody has probably an, a GraphQL API out there. And we all know that we don't see that many external GraphQL APIs. And uh, I actually, you know, survey through and, and all these guys have GraphQL APIs that's actually quite, not not enough, right? Not 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 too many, and uh, but it's not that they REST have not endorsed the API economy. They actually have, and but they still offer REST APIs. They're still not comfortable to offer a, a GraphQL endpoint that they can consume. Um, you know, everyone has their own reasons and and and, and maturity, but uh, you know, Facebook's still offering a REST API. You look at it; it does look like a Facebook a GraphQL endpoint wrapped around REST. But uh, um, nevertheless, it, it is probably because there are challenges. And so, if we if I go back into all the survey that I did, I, I see, for example, uh, um, Starbucks. And Starbucks, you know, they said they were going to build more applications, and here's the the the, the tweeting about their store locator application that they built, and they use GraphQL. If you read that uh, all the replies, someone says, hey, is this just US? And yeah, they said US and only two other markets. But hold on, you know, a store locator is not very different here or anywhere in the world. We, we just need to, you know, use the same kind of uh, APIs to find that store. So it, it tells you a little bit, you know, maybe it's more workloads, not able to manage the workload that uh, other, uh, other locations may provide. Who knows? But, you know, Somehow the application faced some challenges that were not able to deploy elsewhere. Um, a story on Twitch that I found is like someone found the GraphQL endpoint seems to have been dedicated for partners. Someone wanted to use it. 
And uh, they say, well, no, not really. Uh, well, documentation is available, we know that, but uh, you can use it. And uh, if you read the story later on, you see that uh, they actually waive the terms of services and says you may lose your keys if you try to use that GraphQL endpoint. So again, there, there's some governance that they were not ready to, 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 to handle um, on that uh, Twitch API um, for others to, to use. And in the PayPal case, when you read their story, at, at one point they talk about, you know, remember GraphQL is still an API. And they said, you want to make sure that you have sufficient login, retry, circuit breaker patterns, rate limiting, and query complexity check. The first view we, we've seen before, the last one, query complexity checks is, is a little different. But we know as GraphQL users what that means. Each query is a little different. Each query can carry different, uh, different um, meaning, and they actually um, they, they actually can uh, uh, overwhelm the backend depending on what it tries to do. And so, rate limiting now is a little different. Uh, it's not just how many requests per 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 minute. Um, and I may need to, DDoS has a different meaning. Um, we need to figure out when it's time to block someone. And, uh, but I also have uh, to do trade-offs because I, I may want to let that uh, request go through because I am trying to uh, uh, you know, monetize my service. Here's a very simple query, not too big, yet that could potentially create you know, this payment detail supposedly is doing an external API call. And uh, this could potentially do millions of external calls, and it doesn't look that uh, 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 you know complex or, or aggressive in, in some way. So you, what what can you do when you have this request? So you could just send the request to the backend the same way you've been always doing it, and uh, you have several approaches when you get on the backend. You can time out. You can process and, and process your, your request until after a period of time and time out. Or you can start adding up the, the resources you're consuming or the, the amount of data you're, 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 you're building in your, um, in your response. And at some point, create uh, uh, decide to abort when you pass certain thresholds and decide you have reached some limits. But what happens there is that you basically have used the resources of your backend you are probably returning partial data or, you know, and, and so it's, it's, it's dangerous because I can still send lots of requests to your backend. I can still potentially, you know, get all these requests to time out and, and not, not the best thing. So alternatively, you could have analyzed that request before it hit your backend. You could have analyzed it and decide, look, there is too many levels of nesting. The cost of this is, is probably going to be, uh, more than what I'm allowed to give you. And, and, and so you could start thinking about policies. You can think about parsing that request and create uh, something that gives you a uh, uh, first level of parsing on it to, to assess how big, uh, how many levels of nesting or how big the parameters are. Or you can um, and parse and validate that GraphQL request and understand you know, how much data potentially you may be retrieving and how many, how much compute you could potentially be using it and compare that against the policies that you're entitled to. And with that, you know, meet or see if you meet your, your rate policy and, 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 and then decide if you want to let that request go to the backend. So how, how would that work? Well, we propose to enhance what we all know and love uh, in the API management layer, a GraphQL API management layer that is able to basically uh, proxy all those requests and decide whether or not they will go to the backend. So how does that work? So the, the, the proxy layer talks to the backend and introspect that's, uh, that's uh, available. It knows what APIs to offer. That same introspection is passed to the client. Um, now, uh, it also knows how the middle layer is going to behave. So it's able to assess uh, the different um, uh, analysis for those um, queries that are getting prepared. And at some point, the client is going to decide to issue a request. Um, the request is going to hit the gateway. And basically, it's going to get parsed. It's going to get validated um, through the static analysis. 
and the different policies are going to get checked. If the gateway decides that this request meets the, 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 the associated policies to that client, basically it decides to send them. Uh, the request gets processed and on return, then we compare, we can reconcile and see if what we thought, uh, what, what we were charging for this request was accurate. Because the best this gateway is gonna be able to do is create an upper bound. Uh, but as long as that upper bound is tight, as long as that upper bound uh, it, it, it resembles what the API is a potentially able to collect, then maybe we all we need to do is credit back what was not used. And if we do that, we can continue to manage the rate limits and continue to basically protect those backends. And of course, send the information back. So to finish, I think that the way we think about GraphQL management, there's a number of capabilities that take a new shape. I think there is, of course, the, that, that um, need of uh, security, uh, being able to identify the client so then you can understand what the uh, policies associated with that client are. Uh, but now you need to think about threat protection, figuring out how to what parameters are relevant to you based on, on how your data is, is laid out. Uh, it could be the depth of that query or the size of the parameters, or there's many others you could think of. You can do a more detailed analysis, a complexity analysis. We, we like to think of two types of uh, analysis um, that you could do. One was on, on the types or, or the objects that you may obtain. So think about how many data elements I'm gonna get back on my response. And the other one is what does it cost to compute those, those, uh, those, um, uh, th 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 those data elements? And that basically is almost like a, a, a way for the provider to assess the execution cost of that request. Think about the number of resolvers that potentially is gonna get called. Some resolvers may be more expensive, some resolvers may be straightforward or may, not, or may be part of uh, another one. Uh, you can then have runtime limits adjusted to the, to the outcomes of this complexity. Um, of course, you can think having that layer in the middle, you can help you virtualize your data you can create subsets of a given API, a given schema to be uh, something that you offer, um, protect certain fields perhaps, or manage scopes based on, 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 on the user that's requesting it. And of course you get your analytics. Your analytics gives you the, the metering on how you've been using the, 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 the service and, and the added benefit, of course, that what schema is getting used, which is always a good, uh, uh, a good bonus. So you start to understand, you know, operations you may not need or operations that uh, need to be reinforced with additional backend power. So in essence, we, 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 we can do that alone with how GraphQL is today. We, we need to augment with some configuration information. Uh, that's not that terrible because at least the provider and the provider understand what, how uh, its backend works and, and, and knows what it costs. So it could easily augment that. We uh, believe by, by doing that static analysis, we can query um, the request prior to execution and say if we allow them. And ultimately we can reconcile the responses to make sure that we update the limits, the rate limits and the, the analytics that come with it. Conclusion, um, I think GraphQL is redefining the way client-server interactions happen, is definitely changing the development culture of enterprises, and I think it's enabling how and you know providers can start talking to their larger ecosystem. And by bringing GraphQL uh, API management into the mix, I think uh, we're basically gonna uh, reinforce um, to basically create, enable those drivers um, with, with this technology so that we can protect our backends and, and respond to our client needs. Um, it's been actually very gratifying to see uh, several companies uh, in this conference uh, talking about this very special aspect of uh, the flow of our request. And uh, of course, we at IBM are very much uh, working and uh, had delivered uh, a few weeks back uh, add-ons to API Connect or, 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 or API management layer um, 
the support for GraphQL. Thank you so much. And I will take any questions. So we probably have time for like one question uh, and then uh, <laughs> please for the break before our final talk. Uh, do we have, we have any specific question here? Let's just take a look. Anything specific? These are great uh, architectural patterns um, and a lot of important things to bear in mind. Looks like people just enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, great. Um, yeah, that was a, a great talk. And so really appreciate you being able to make it. I'm glad that the thunderstorms uh, stayed away. <laughs> and uh, the anecdotes of companies embracing GraphQL scale is always an important thing to see. Um, can API management facade GraphQL? An API facade GraphQL API management. If I were to guess, so, mm -hmm. so right, I, I think I understand what he's trying to say. Yeah. Um, so you sure can put an API man API management today, but all you're gonna do is meter the request. You you're just gonna get a post and you're gonna send that post to the backend, and you're not gonna understand what the request is. I mean GraphQL the the value is in the request, is on the content of that request. Well, in, in with REST, we were able to do that just with the basically the signature of the request, uh, or, or with within with the name of the method in a way. So it, it's not enough. It, it's not enough. It's not going to give you the 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 proper rate limiting. Right? You're not going to be able to protect your backend uh, use of resources, which is key. Uh, you're not going to be able to uh, anticipate a threat, uh, a very small query. We actually even had to, uh, I mean, and by the way, people have been doing this. The, 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 those that have exposed APIs have been able to do this, but it's not, they're not doing it with this middle layer. You can see how uh, Apollo is doing it. Um, they have a way to do a rate limit, but your request has reached the, the Apollo server. Um, there are rate limits defined um, by, by GitHub, for example, Shopify, um, but th those are proprietary methods that they follow. So I think if you, if you want to kind of adopt GraphQL, expose it to others, even internally, then you st need to start thinking GraphQL API management in some way. Very good. Thank you.